He played a psychopathic murderer in the play Trunkline Cafe. For his culminating scene, he'd look as if he'd just came out from an icy lake. So before going on stage to play the scene, he would run up and down the stage until he was out of breath, and then he would throw a bucket of ice water on his head. The audience was always blown away by his performance. Welcome to Personality Matters, I'm Arthur Kams, and today we'll be talking about Marlon Brando. Brando was born on April 3rd, 1924 in Nebraska, US. Brando had quite a difficult childhood. He was raised in a family with an alcoholic mother and with a father that was often away. His elder sisters moved out early and Brando was often home alone for hours. It was at an early age that he revealed his acting abilities by playing in front of his mother. He tried to entertain her so she wouldn't go to look for alcohol, although from time to time he had to bring her home from bars. Without a stable parental figure in his life, Brando soon became a problematic teenager who often had conflicts with his peers and teachers, which led him to be kicked out of school. When he was 19, he moved down to New York, where his elder sisters were living at that time. In New York, he managed to enter drama school, where he was guided by famous actress Stella Adler. Adler supported Brando a lot and helped him develop his talent. That's where he was introduced to method acting. Method acting is a technique or type of acting in which an actor aspires to encourage sincere and emotionally expressive performances by fully inhabiting the role of the character. Coupled with his innate talent, the method helped Brando develop an incredible sense of realism in the characters he embodied. Once, Stella Adler offered the class an exercise, act like chickens, and then added that a nuclear bomb was about to fall on them. While most of the students in the class were running around and clucking, Brando was sitting calmly and pretended he was laying an egg. When Adler asked him, why are you reacting like that? He said, I'm a chicken, what do I know about bombs? Later, he was cast in such places as I Remember Mummer and Trunkline Cafe. Both were very successful and brought him to the attention of Hollywood producers. At one point, he was offered several contracts, but he rejected all of them because a seven-year contract seemed unjust to him. His first movie was The Man, but major success came with such movies as The Patter, Julius Caesar, and The Wild One. In general, in the 1950s, he was at height of his career. He turned into a leading actor, won an Oscar for Best Actor, and earned worldwide recognition. However, the 1960s was not such a prosperous time for Brando. He continued to star in movies with high budget, although most of them turned out to be box office failures. Although his career was not seriously undermined, he still got offers from directors, but the problems in his career were caused mainly by Brando himself, because he had quite a temper. Also, at that time, Brando joined the civil rights movement, aimed at supporting black minorities that struggled for equality. He was so involved in the political activity that for a short period of time he was completely absent from the movie industry. But after three year hiatus, he came back and played a triumphant role, Vito Corleone in The Godfather. His acting was called outstanding and genius, which eventually won him a second Oscar. But in support of Native Americans, he boycotted the ceremony and refused the reward. The next two movies, Last Tango in Paris and Apocalypse Now, also became enormously popular and afterward assumed legendary status. In Apocalypse Now, Brando appeared on only a couple of scenes. His total screen time didn't exceed 15 minutes, but the time was generously paid. He earned earned more than $1 million per week. However, that was his last big movie. Later, Brando could no longer play leading roles due to his changed appearance, although occasionally he accepted supporting roles. Here are some facts about The Godfather. The Godfather is arguably his best role, or at least for most of us, it's considered as his signature role. Interestingly, when Brando was brought up as a possible actor for Vito Corleone, the director of Paramount spoke up against it. Eventually, the studio gave its consent on Brando starring in the movie, though under several conditions. But when the director of The Godfather, Francis Coppola, showed the videotape in front of the casting, the studio bosses were amazed at Brando's talent and withdrew their conditions and let him play in the movie. What was on the tape? Perhaps he made him the offer they couldn't refuse. <laughs> Hopefully we all remember the opening scene in the movie when Don Corleone is caressing a cat while listening to someone asking for help. Well, that cat was not supposed to be in the movie. It was complete improvisation. It was a stray cat that Brando perfectly integrated into the scene and made him a part of his character. For the addition, Brando stuffed his cheeks with cotton wool to create the bulldog look, but for the movie he had a specially constructed mouthpiece. You know, the scene Brando wearing sweaty tight t-shirt that fits so well. Well, now it's considered as one of the most iconic 
looks in cinema history. It was from the movie Streetka named Desire. The movie completely redefined male image and male sexuality in general. Before Brenda, no man had been considered erotic, as the most sexual thing about the man was the suit, not his body. The humble t-shirts, previously seen as an undergarment, was completely reimagined on the set of Streetcar. The result exposed more the man's body that had been seen in mainstream cinema before, shocking critics and making ways in the industry, and also probably making ways of ladies' food. But what actually happened was that Brando showed the whole world just how sexually appealing and attractive a man could be. In the last years of his life, he led a reclusive lifestyle and let only a few people into his house. One of them was the king of pop himself, Michael Jackson. Brando died on the 1st of July 2004 at a hospital from a respiratory disease. He was 80 years old. The legacy of this act is immense. Brando took acting to a completely new level. No doubt one can say that film acting can be divided into two parts, before Brando and after him. Thank you for watching Personality Matters. We talk about people who made the world. Until next time, I am Arthur Kemps.